Today in the news we have an RTX false alarm, an SMT-less CPU, and a late lineup. What's up guys, I'm Snows and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with NVIDIA. A few days ago, we saw reports of a possible RTX 2080 Ti Super or a new Titan RTX. It was found through an IDA64 beta patch that included release notes referring to a GeForce RTX T10 8TU102. Most of us thought that this meant a new consumer grade card was about to be released, likely a 2080 Ti Super. Well, it seems like this was a false alarm. A few days after the release notes popped up, NVIDIA Nvidia made an announcement that they would add RTX support to their cloud gaming service, GeForce Now. GeForce Now has been using Tesla GPUs for a long time now, and it looks like this T10-8 is likely a Turing-based Tesla card made for the service. In the same way as both the Tesla P40 and the 1080 Ti share the GP102 chip, this new Tesla card and the 2080 Ti probably share the TU102. A user on Nvidia's forums also saw T10-8 in his Quake Champions game while tweaking his graphics settings, which just confirms that theory. That's not to say that the 2080 Ti is never going to come though, it just means that it's probably not the one that we saw. Maybe Nvidia is saving it for AMD's high-end GPUs when they come out, just like they did with the RX 5700 series and their super line. Moving on to AMD, their CPU lineup is already pretty impressive, ranging from the 6-core 12-thread 3600, which comes highly recommended as the best budget CPU, all the way up to a 16-core 32-thread 3950X coming up in September. But we've been waiting for something even cheaper. A few days back, we saw the Ryzen 5 3500. It was leaked by AMD through an EEC filing, along with other Ryzen Pro processors and a Ryzen 9 3900 non-X. Well, well, now, thanks to Tum Apisak, it looks like AMD is going for a 6-core option without SMT, so 6 cores and 6 threads. This new chip would compete directly with Intel's 6-core, six 6-thread six lineup like the i5-9400, 9500, and 9600. In terms of value though, if it's priced right, it could be the king. The 3500 would be clocked at 3.6GHz base with a boost of 4.1. Those are the same boost clocks as the locked i5. 9400, but is still under both the 9500 at 4.4 gigahertz and the 9600K at 4.6. Now, if we take into consideration the IPC improvements in Zen 2, it would likely beat both. The Ryzen part also comes with a massive 32 megabytes of cache and an extra four lanes of PCIe 4.0. But then we have the pricing. As is, the Core i5 lineup ranges from $150 US for the 9400F to around $200. $140 for the 9600K. If you're in the $200 market, the 3600 would be the better balanced CPU with great performance in gaming, but even better performance in productivity. For anything lower than that, we only have Intel products right now. If AMD can place the 3500 at around 150 bucks, it would definitely be the king of the segment. Now we know that the Zen Plus based 3400G is already at $150 US and it's a quad core, but the graphics processor might be a reason to have them both at the same price point. And all of that is if they want to sell it to you, because like we discussed on the last video, there is a chance that this CPU might be only for OEMs. That means you would only have access to it in pre-built PCs. I really hope AMD changes that for this generation, since this CPU would be an amazing place to save some cash to put towards a better GPU. Actually, let me ask you this. Would a $50 difference be enough for you to abandon the SMT? You could put it towards a GPU if you want, but I'm wondering if you guys would actually actually do it? Let me know down below. Moving on to Intel, a few weeks ago we saw a few slides leak thanks to XFastest. These revealed that Intel's next-gen CPUs for the desktop market would live on a different socket, would use a different chipset, and that the TDP of the 10-core 20-thread Comet Lake CPU would move up to 125 watts. Well, a new desktop product roadmap leaked from the same source, and it's giving us a little more updated information on the subject. Comet Lake S on the 400 series chipset will 
come out in Q1 of 2020. With the earlier roadmaps released in April, we had one pointing towards a Q4 release this year and another for a Q2 release next year. Well, it looks like it's going to be a dead center this time. What's interesting is that in Q1 of next year, which is likely going to be at CES, AMD will probably have a sneak peek of their Zen 3 based architecture. So I really wonder how Intel is going to proceed. Honestly, I don't think they'll be changing their ways. We can already see that they're swapping sockets and chipset and nothing seems to be new. Maybe they'll focus on the lower end CPUs at a more affordable price, but it's Intel. It probably won't happen. Oh, and lastly, a really quick bit of awesomeness. Someone made a ray traced Excel file. Waste of time? Yes. Impressive? Definitely. Link down below if you want to see the full video. Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for the news today. Hopefully you've enjoyed. If you got any questions, you know where to put them. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Also, thanks for 30,000 subscribers, my dudes. It doesn't matter as much as it used to. I mean, nowadays people will watch 95% of their content through recommendations, but still, thanks. It's appreciated. I love you guys.